Hey guys, welcome to Maths Pays. We're looking at dot plots and column graphs, two pretty simple, straightforward graphs. Um, but nonetheless, we'll go through this. Uh, make sure you make some notes as well if you haven't done this in class already. So, what is a dot plot? Well, pretty straightforward, realistically. Um, a dot plot simply has a number line, okay, often referred to, I guess, as an x axis. Um, and then basically the frequency. Uh, which is the number of times the, the score occurs is placed by a single dot. So for example, if I was asked um, what was the most common, now hopefully you remember that might refer to as the mode, the most common number here would be 10.4 seconds but because it occurred one, two, three, four, five times. Um, if I ask for something like the highest score, minus the lowest, and you might remember that to be what we refer to as the range of the scores. Well, the highest score here is an 11. It's right at the, the, the front there. And we're taking away 10.1, which will give me a range of 0 0.9. Now, that brings me to another point. Do you remember what that little number there is called? That's right far out from all the others. We refer to that as an outlier. Okay. Um, so basically, a dot plot, pretty straightforward to uh, to sort of learn. Um, we do have a title or an, for the axis there, as you can see, and we've uh, got a title over here as well for the heading of the actual graph. Um, a column graph, very straightforward again. Um, with the information, we have our frequency or the number of students on the y-axis, and we have our title on the x-axis, which is our scores, okay? So in this case, if it asks for what is the mode or what is the most frequent score, we can see that in this case, it is yellow. Um, what is the lowest score? It's going to be um, red. Now, unfortunately, we can't do things like the highest minus the lowest because we can't subtract purple from red or vice versa. Um, so again, a couple of things to, to note for both of these graphs that you must have titles for the axes. So for example, the juices and the number of students, we must have a title for the actual graph. We've got the um, students' favorite juices versus the times for a 100 meter sprint. Um, we need to make sure as well that um, the axis has a, an even scale for both the y and x axis. So you can see here that it goes up by two each time uh, nice and evenly. And again, for these values here, although they're not numbers, you can see they're even gaps across. Um, and likewise for our, our number line there, we've got an even scale. Um, for a column graph in particular, we have gaps between the columns. That's really important as well. Um, and pretty much apart from that, that gets most of our information. So we must have for both our graphs those things there. So again, if you're making some notes, that's important to write down. Now, to finish off, I'm just going to give you a couple of questions. Okay, so draw a dot plot for each of the following sets of graphs or data. Sorry, I'm just going to give you one set of data. In fact, what I'm going to ask you to do is not just to draw a dot plot, I want you to try and draw a column graph as well. Now, in terms of this, we're not going to have much of a heading, um, but certainly you can put a heading such as dot plot and column graph. So go on and pause it, have a crack through, and hopefully you can get your answers out. Okay, welcome back. So again, mine are not going to be great. Okay, because I don't have a ruler, unfortunately, but I'm going to start off with a number line here. Now, my smallest score is zero, so I'm going to have at least down to a zero. You can have a negative number if you want as well. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I don't need to go up to six, but you can put a six on there if you wish. So I'm going to put my numbers, and you can see again, I've used pretty much the same distance apart there. Um, now, I'm going to put here, because I don't have any sort of numbers, I'm just going to put that's there, our scores. Now, I'm not told what those numbers represent, so that's good enough. And now I'm going to put, and I'm going to put this in yellow, my scores. So I've got a 2, I'm going to put a dot there, I've got a 0, and you can see each time I'm just crossing these numbers off, that ensures that I don't miss any numbers. And that's really handy about a dot plot, that you don't really need to have them in order to do this, because they kind of go in order as you go through. And I've got my last, my one, 
my two and my three. Not a bad idea whenever you're doing this that you actually count up your numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we've got ten numbers there as well. Um, and you might just put this a heading is a dot plot because I don't really know what the numbers represent there. So again, I can see there that the most common scores are two and three. Um, the highest minus the lowest is five, take away zero. We can now do a lot of information off that graph. Okay. Now, let's have a look at the column graph. So again, this is not going to be perfect, guys. Please make sure that you use a ruler. All right, I don't have a ruler, so that's not going to be uh, very possible here. So for my uh, column graph, we always put our scores on the x-axis, and we call this our frequency, okay? Um, unless you're told it's the number of whatever it's going to be, the number of scores that we've got. Um, now, I'm going to start with zero here, then I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five. Very similar to what we've got for the dot plot on our number line. Now, I'm going to see how many times that the most of them have occurred. You can see that three and two are called three times. So I'm going to go one, two, three. You can go up to four if you wish. You don't have to put it there. Um, and now what I'm going to do is start drawing my column. So zero, you can see only occurred once. So I'm going to draw a nice little line up to one. And I'm going to color that in there nicely. Um, we've got one occurred twice. So I'm going to leave a nice little gap. Now yours should be exactly the same with the part. Mine's not going to be, so I do apologize. Two goes up three times. It's a little bit hard doing it on this. Three goes up the same. Four, there was none, none at four, and there was only one at five. So again, guys, yours should be a little bit nicer than mine. Make sure you have nice gaps in between. And the only other last thing I'm missing here, I guess, is my heading. Again, I don't know what these numbers represent, so I'm just going to put column graph there. And I've got my axes. The distance between the y's are nice and um, the same. Distance between my x's are nice and the same. But again, make sure you use rules. That's a dot plot. That's a column graph. Very straightforward. Have an awesome day.